All right, people, welcome. This is part one of the March question mark final band list talk. It, it's not the final talk. It's just the name that I gave it a long time ago for this kind of pseudo series, and I stuck with it. It stuck. So uh, pretty much how it goes is that I put up a video, and you guys commented a butt ton. It seems like this gets bigger and bigger the more my channel grows and the more subscribers I gain. Because everybody wants to go ahead and get their voice in, which is great. So usually I would go through individual comments and go through everything and probably repeat myself. This time I, I took every single individual card that was different because there was a lot of duplicates and stuff like that. Every single individual card that anybody put up, I'm going to be discussing them all. And you probably think like, oh, well, this is not going to be that long. 87 cards people 87 and probably in counting because you know you guys can continue commenting in the comment section below Like I said, you might want to wait till the end till all three parts are done But if there's anything that I haven't addressed that you think that I might not address or any surprise factors uh, I might go ahead and throw them at the end of the list So if you guys want to go ahead and comment in this video as well, but yeah 87 different cars to talk about this is going to be a long one so i'm going to actually split it up into three parts monday wednesday and friday i'm gonna go ahead and talk about you know 28 ish cards each day and uh we'll eventually get this done so no matter how long part is whether it be super long or super short i'm gonna go over every single card and there's some good cards there's some good things there's some bad things some crazy things i'll address them all keep in mind uh one i'm very conservative very 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 conservative uh you know if i don't really see a reason to move it then i won't uh keep in mind i'm trying to predict what konami is thinking and i'd rather be completely wrong and have it as a surprise factor than try to predict it and then it doesn't happen I, it's as simple as that for example stratos there's just no reason to predict stratos ever coming off the ban list anytime soon it just seems like they don't want stratos to come now if he comes off the list oh surprise oh that, that threw me for a curveball but i'm not going to sit here every single ban list prediction and say stratos 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 until it comes true no it's dumb so no 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 and I just don't see any reason on Ben Stratos this time either. So uh, I think Stratos is on here. I think a couple of people were like, oh, free my nigga. Like, hey, if that's what Konami wants to do. But at the end of the day, it's all about Konami. So I'm going to try to get in their head. I'm trying to think profit margin wise, game balance wise. I'm going to take it and try to predict way past just, oh, this is what I want to see. You know, I try to keep bias completely out of it. So that being said, let's go ahead and go down part one. We have a nice handful of cards to talk about. Nice destruct. Uh, discussion. So let's go ahead and get started. So starting it off with a simple one, Dragon's Ravine. Uh, I don't know why this card didn't go up to three. I mean, I, I really can't say that I would predict it not going up to three, and it kind of threw me for a curveball when it didn't go up to three in the previous list. Uh, it just really just seems like maybe Konami forgot about it, or maybe they were just kind of worried about some dragons. But not only do you not have to worry about the dragon rooms, they are banned, we don't have to worry about them, but we have an upcoming dragon deck that you might want to promote. You know, you got that uh, that blue eyes support, and if you want to play Dragon Ravine, I mean, they have their own fill spell, if you want to play Dragon Ravine, more power to you. So, uh, with the dragon rooms banned, there's no reason to have Dragon Ravine at two or one or banned it's it can go to three and no one would even bat an eyelash like i said i think i i think konami just kind of forgot about this card and uh yeah it was it was just one of the the cards hit for dragon rulers and you know uh it was one of the cards to go ahead and step away from now all the other dragon related dragon ruler related cards we've still been there eh, but yeah all right moving on we have another dragon ruler related card we have super rejuve all right uh, see, the problem with Super Rejuve is that it is a... How do I put it? How does Konami see this card? They, they see it as an unfit card. They, that, and that's exactly how it is. There's particular cards that are on the list deliberately because Konami sees it in their eyes. It's unfit card. It's an unfair card. Uh, and it just brought to their attention when Dragon Rulers were doing the thing that it brought to their attention like, whoa, this crap, this card's really old and it's really broken. Uh, it, it just doesn't, it's just not a necessary part, part of the game. There's really no reason to bring it back and then have a Dragon Deck be able to use it and then have to reban it. It's just, it's fine. You know, Dragon Decks don't really need it. Uh, it just seems like one of those dirty cards that uh, Konami will go ahead and keep. It. it was on that list, you know, the September 2013 list. And that was the list of lists, if you remember that. And not a lot of things have really budged from that list, including uh, your nigger Stratos. So, uh, no, I can't say Super Rejuve either. It just seems like a not necessary card in this game of Yu-Gi-Oh! So we shouldn't even press our luck. I think that's what Konami's thinking. Alright, uh, moving on, we have Super Poly. Alright. Uh, so, Super Poly was at 3, then it was limited, and then next thing you know, bam, bam. 
Uh, and it's been banned uh, mainly predominantly because of Shadal. Shadal's kind of made the hype real with, you know, being able to super poly your monster with my mon- and then uh, all that shenanigans. But Shadal's been kind of dead as of late. Uh, do I think that Shadal's are going to be revived this list? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, ta- it takes a couple lists, you know. Uh, we're still stepping away from that format and cleaning the things up from the previous format, even though we haven't seen much. Uh, they're probably going to go ahead and keep Shadal's things. It's not OCG. TCG is different most. OCG, they would see as soon, or ARG, as soon as they would see that Shadal's aren't doing much, they would probably get thrown on bone. TCG, nah. It would probably be like maybe at least two lists before they do something. So, uh, that being said, could Super Poly go back to one? It could, but I'm probably gonna put in the same boat as Super Juice just because of that whole you can't respond thing. And while, uh, it wouldn't be a popular card, I mean, maybe you'd see it in Heroes. Uh, just that whole, like, you can't respond thing, uh, just made, uh, seem like Konami wanted to push over it. Because it seemed like it was doing fine at one previously, and then they went ahead and been like, you know what, you can't play anything response to this, let's just go ahead and ban this card. And it's been banned ever since, so I'm not gonna go ahead and predict that one. So, yeah. Alright, moving on, we have Pendulum Sorcerer, Dante in Disguise. Nah, nah, it's too early. Uh, he, he's obviously one of the big cash cows of the set. And not only that, but he's not too broken. He's not. He really isn't. Like, when you can when you compare the whole scheme of things, he's not too broken in comparison. It's not like he's, like, game-shattering and everybody can do it like Solemn Strike. It's just this particular engine, but you need the other cards with it. So if you address the other cards, like Skull Crowback, Joker, or Monkey Board, then you can keep your Sorcerer at 3 because it's just, mon- it's just Sorcerer searching out those cards and recycling. That's the problem, you know. So uh, not this list. Possibly next list, but not this one. All right, moving on. Allure of Darkness. All right, so that is actually a card that I think could move up. Just not speaking from a Konami mindset, but my mindset. Uh, I mean, darks, of course, are not as predominant as they used to be. And, uh, I mean, when you really think about it with all these draw cards today, it's not even a terrible card. I mean, I get it back in this day when it got hit. It was like, holy crap, you know, dark is ruling everything. We're in Teledad format. Oh, my God. We're, they're just drawing the crap star and getting hella resources. Let's go ahead and emergency ban Allure of Darkness. Put it down to one. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. But now, what dark decks are there? Uh, maybe like half of Cosmos, if that. Uh... And when you really think about it, there's no plussing. It's not like Pot of Greed, where it's just like, wow, you just went plus one. You went Allure, Banish the Dark Monster, and drew two cards. Well, Allure, draw two cards, Banish the Dark Monster. So maybe that's the iffy part, because you can see the cards before you banish, but still, it's still zero. So could Allure move up? Probably. It could probably move up to two, and then eventually three, but will Konami move it? Just because, probably, just because it has to do with something on Emergency Ban, like I said, I'm going to leave that to a curveball. I'm going to leave that to a curveball. All right, next card to talk about. Uh, Trishula. No. <laughs> nah, Trish is going to stay at 1. Uh, Trish can't move any higher than 1. Trish is a ridiculous monster, uh, and when you get multiple Trish, you get multiple Trish shenanigans, and we just can't have that. Well, uh, synchroing mechanic may not be the predominant uh, mechanic right now. You cannot say or argue and state the fact that Trishula ain't shit, because Trishula will fuck you up. So, nah, we have 1 Trishula. OCG has 1 Trishula. There's no precedence, so uh, 1 Trishula we will get. Alright, Card Trooper. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, it seems like if they wanted to move Card Trooper, they would have done it a long time ago, a long time ago. But it, maybe, maybe they're just kind of butt hurt from the from the Troop Dupe age. I don't know. Uh, OCG does have three Card Troopers. We only have two, and you really can't do the the Card Trooper shenanigans with uh, Machine Dupe, uh, Troop Dupe Scoop. But like I said if they were gonna move it, maybe they should have moved it back when. Uh, when Infernoids were popular, you know? There's a lot of cards that, you know, if they, when they wanted to sell Infernoids like I, I like hotcakes, they, you know, they put a card trip of three. They could have put a uh, Charge of Light, Light Brigade to three. They could have put Monster Gate to three, but they n- just never did for the TCG. OCG is a different story, and OCG, sometimes you'll occasionally see uh, those decks top, uh, the Infernoids, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to leave that one to a surprise as well, because I think I predicted Card Trooper in the past, and I didn't get it correct, so I'll leave that... As a, as a curveball. Alright, moving on. Uh, reasoning. I'm assuming reasoning going down to maybe 2 or to 1. Uh, nah. Reasoning is fine at 3. Uh, the, the, the reasoning hype is over when it comes to Cosmos. It was just kind of a filler card, and I know you're probably like, Oh, well, they hit reasoning because Cosmos are doing... No, 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 no. That was a filler card. They, they had a little bit of consistency issue, so they were like, Oh, we have many different levels. Let's go ahead and play reasoning. But now... They have cards to fill in that space. They have the Tin Can. They have the Cosmojo. And these Cosmo decks that you see top nowadays, after Bosch, 
Do they? Do you see reasoning? Nah, nah. Uh, and Fortnite's aren't doing anything with it, so no, nah. no. Nah, reasoning's fine. All right, plush fire. All right, this is this is we're getting into the nitty gritty here. All right, plush fire. I don't think that plush fire needs to be hit. Hold on. If we hit all the things that are related to it, all right. Uh, there's a couple cards that the shenanigans with plush fire. Of course, luster, wavering eyes, and damage juggler those are the those are the, th the big three all right the things that of course destroy your plush fire and get you that monster summon from your deck and the what monster you summon you know and generally it's going to be a damage juggler i think that if you address the other cards i think plush fire is fine i think they went a little bit extreme uh by banning plush fire in the ocg i didn't really think they had to take it that far i think just banning damage juggler would be enough because if you ban damage juggler what are you getting with plush fire what a hat tricker what a what a, a trick clown? Meh, meh. It's not damage juggler. Damage juggler, the, the banishing, the searching, like the, the, the damage juggler is the shit. Uh, and you know they still had three luster. They three still have three wavering eyes. So you can kind of see why they banned plush fire. Instead of hitting the enablers, they just hit the engine itself. So I'm not sure the which way TCG Konami is gonna take that angle, but I don't think that plush fire needs to be hit as long as you handle all the other things. You know, if we say wavering eyes to one, if we say luster to one, if we say Damage juggler banned, then what is plush fire doing? What, what are you going to twin twist your own plush fire? Nah, nah. So, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and talk about more about those other cards when we get to them. But yeah, I think I think I think probably plush fire could probably stay at three as long as you handle all the other cards. All right, let's go ahead and get to Ptolemaios. All right, uh, yeah, yeah, I think Ptolemaios will be banned. Uh, Ptolemaios rank four just shouldn't have access to rank fives. Uh, is it's not like it's hard to pull an infinity, and we, we've passed that threshold. There's it's the secondary market is not as in controlling; it's more of a set wise. So, you we passed that threshold from like, hey, Potomac is legal. Get your one infinity, go to town. To all right, we banned Potomac. So you still want to play infinity in your like Cyber Dragon and you know Dino Miss deck? Then hey, you get three by more set. So we passed that threshold. So it's time to go ahead and take the the infinity away from the rank fours. They should not have access to that. There's actually a great hit by uh, OCG and. Uh, precedence off of them like they they banned shockmaster we banned shockmaster you know back and forth with it because i believe that the tcg doesn't make their list until they actually discuss it with some of the ocg as well uh i think they'll be they'll definitely ocg will definitely bring up like yeah you should probably ban ptolemyos and they'll be like yeah you know what we should so ptolemyos will get banned and then the next card infinity you don't need to ban infinity infinity is dirty but it should only be dirty in the dirty hands, you know. If you want to go ahead and play freaking Cyber Dragons or freaking Dynamis to pull out your Infinity, more power to you. But if you're playing PP pee -pee Rank Four Spam deck and you get Infinity just because of Ptolemaus, no, that's when we have to draw the line. So Infinity is fine. Ptolemaus should be banned. All right, moving on. Oh, we finally got to this card. I already discussed him a little bit. Damage Juggler. Damage Juggler should be banned. Uh, I was actually thinking about it. I was like, where should we put Damage Juggler? Should we limit him? Should we ban him? We should, we should ban him. And the reason why we should ban him is because he is the core of so many engines. He is the performance engine. He is the leader. He is the, the, the ring leader in this charade, this circus of perform ages. Uh, I mean, think about it. Think about it. His hand effect to block damage. Awesome, you know, people wanted, uh, you know, Necros of Valkyrie's head because he blocked damage. Damage juggler does that. But then you can go ahead and banish it and get a search. Okay, so you're a searcher too? The freaking, uh, the Brilliant Fusion. I mean, a couple of people saying that uh, Brilliant Fusion should be hit. But generally, what do you do? Brilliant Fusion, go ahead and fuse, send Damage Juggler. Damage Juggler's gonna get the search, you know? Uh, uh, you're seeing, uh, some people even wanting the head of, uh, of, oh my god, what is the name? Uh, Omega. Omega, the Synchro Monster. What's the shenanigans to Omega? Banish, Damage Jugger, could search, Omega, put it back. Banish the Damage Jugger, Omega, put it back. Search, search, search. There's so many shenanigans with Damage Juggler. And Damage Juggler should just go, you know? You can have your three, your three plus, right? You can have your three hat trick. You can have your three trick climb. No one cares. But when you got, th when your Damage Juggler is gone, let me see what you're going to do now, you know? Especially when I think Wavering Eye should be hit as well. You have that contrast. You have the contrast. We can't hit Wavering Eyes to one and then have three damage juggling. You'll never get your Wavering Eyes off. But Wavering Eyes should definitely be hit. But damage juggler should be gone as well. So I definitely think that damage juggler should be banned. Will be banned. Precedence off OCG as well. So that's good. All right, moving on. We have Wavering Eyes. Wavering Eyes should be limited. Uh, it can't be at three. It can't be at two. It shouldn't be banned. So what does that leave it, right? One. Uh, 
Because if you leave it, if you leave it at three, we've we've seen the shenanigans for Wavering Eyes. I don't think there's anybody in the community who's like Wavering Eyes is so fair. We should keep it at three. No, you get Wavering Eyes, especially in a pendulum based match, you're done for. All right, <laughs> you leave that two, same thing. I mean, you lower the consistency a little bit, but still, it's just like all right, Wavering Eyes hit all four, banish your shit, get a search. Oh, and get my second Wavering Eyes. You know, you can't. You, that, that's another thing. You that, get that second Wavering Eyes. Like, that shouldn't even be a thing. I don't even know why they put that on damn Wavering Eyes. But you get another Wavering Eyes, so you can consistently do more Wavering Eyes shenanigans. It's dumb. So Wavering Eyes should go down to one. And if it wasn't just for that whole getting multiple Wavering Eyes things. It breaks your skill. It cracks your skills. Cracking your skills is a huge no-no. Uh, of course, with Aradine and Plush Fire, huge no-no. I mean, come on. OCG even went ban Heavy Storm, bring back Hepburn's Feather Duster, just so you can't crack your own scales with your Heavy Storm. No, no, no. And Wavering Eyes does exactly that. Uh, you know, uh, that's one thing. And it's a, it's a searcher. Whatever pendulum based deck you're playing doesn't even matter. It's a it's a searcher not for a particular deck, but an entire archetype, uh, entire game mechanic, not archetype, game mechanic. Whether you're playing Cleese, you know, Dynamis, PP, Performing, it doesn't matter. I'm break my two scales and search for a pendulum monster. Doesn't matter. Wavering Eyes made Tower Turbo. And they went to the extreme of hitting scale down to one and banning towers when all they had to do was just hit Wavering Ice. Waver Without Wavering Ice, Tower Turbo is not even a thing. It's too inconsistent. But we see the other way around. They've made their uses out of Wavering Ice. Wavering Ice has done enough chaos, so we'll definitely Wavering Ice should go down to one. All right. So that's, that's another card. All right. Moving on. Monarch Pandeity. All right. I mean, the structure deck. Just came out. I, I really can't determine how OP monarchs are if I haven't seen them. <laughs> so that, that's kind of extreme. I mean, I get that you're kind of a little bit maybe salty about when you duel on DN or Depro or whatever, but we don't have any precedence or uh, relevancy off of tournaments. So yeah, I haven't seen monarchs haven't topped the YCS, so why haven't topped the regionals? How do you hit something that hasn't even out yet? Like, for right now, I can't say anything. Uh, maybe in the future, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we don't have any, we don't even have any precedent off of OCG, but they seem like they want Monarchs to do well. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's a structure deck, so maybe they'll leave it alone for a little while, but I eventually see, uh, depending on how OP Monarchs are, and how, how much flooding they are in the format, especially in, in stacking with the PP, I'm just not sure, so. We'll find out. Alright, moving on, we have Sandian. No. <laughs> it, it, it seems like Konami's having a lot of fun with this whole ban Sandgan thing. Could Sandgan come back? Probably, but... Uh, you know, a lot of these cards with this whole, like, oh, Forbidden, Sandgan. He's like, he's, he's kind of like now the, the new poster child of Forbidden. So, yeah. <laughs> and it seems like Konami's having a lot of fun with it, too. It seems like he's been on a lot of cards as of late with, you know, him riding this train of Forbidden Land with Delinquent Duo and shit. And, of course, you can't compare Sandgan to that, but... Nah, no, I think I think they're gonna go ahead and keep them there. And I'll just leave it as a surprise factor if they do bring them back. Alright. Moving on, we got Dragonfly and Hornet. Uh you can have three Hornet. You can't have Dragonfly though. Like you can't have you can't have three Dragonfly, three Hornet. Like no. Full power injectors is ridiculous. I don't care what format I'm in. Especially in this oh yeah, because let me just go ahead and summon Dragonfly, equip on equip, pop your crack your scale, crack your scale, go plus OTK, go hell of, no, like there's too much destruction. It really is. Uh you know, while well, injectors have a bad matchup. Rightfully so. You could probably up the Hornet. You know, Mathematician went down to one, so you can see a loader a little bit. But I, I just don't see Konami doing that either. It's, they seem like if they wanted to move uh, Insectors, Hornet, or... Yeah, Hornet. They would have done a long time ago off of just OCG. Just precedence. I mean, we saw OCG, and they never touched it. Maybe they're a little bit more butthurt about uh, Insectors and uh, wind-ups than we think, so... Nah. But could Hornet go up to three? Yeah. Could Dragonfly go up to three? No. <laughs> yeah. I mean... You could bring Dragonfly 3 if you ban Hornet, but it would have, it would have either be Dragonfly 3, Hornet banned, or Hornet at 3, Dragonfly at 1. So, but it can't be both at 3. No, 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 no. Alright, moving on, we have Dragoons. Atlantean Dragoons going up to 3 to promote, to promote Atlantean. They don't need any help promoting that deck at all. No. Uh, the set selling fine. Uh, you act like Neptibus is super expensive. I mean, they don't make any money off the secondary market for the selling of Mermels. Uh, they don't need any help with that. Uh, right now, we have set precedence. Dragoons at 2, Diva at 1. That's exactly how it's going down the OCG. And they're even more liberal than us. So, uh, you know, we kind of copied OCG. We put Dragoons up to 2. And 
yeah, we can go ahead and leave everything right there. Uh, there's no need to put Dragoons up to 2 or 3 or put Diva up to 2 or 3 to try to promote Mermels or Atlanteans or Nebus. None of that. Then we don't need that. So there we go. Handled that too. Uh, moving on, we have Tour Guide. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, as long as Burning Abyss are just still here, even just leaving a little bit relevant, uh, Tour Guide is ridiculous in Burning Abyss. And we've seen Burning Abyss do a little bit, you know, despite their hits. They're not dead. I don't think they're going to go to the extreme of hating Burning Abyss again, but they're not going to give them anything either. So, uh, Tour Guide will probably stay at one for a really long time. You know, this isn't the first time that Tour Guide has experienced this rodeo. It seems like every single time there's just some level 3 fiend. No. Uh, and, I mean, you don't really need to ride that bad. I mean, you got your Rhino now for Birdie Biz, so, hey. <laughs> Alright, uh, Luster, Draco Slam. At first, I was thinking, I was thinking about this card, and I was like, this guy should, this guy should be hit. Like, God, he, he pops another scale, he gets the same scale, he can some of the monsters for particular. But then, I realized that he's not just himself. If he was just himself, standalone card, not an archetype, hell yeah, he'd be hit. Like, hell yeah, you know, he's a, he's a free agent, but... He's an archetype. He, he's part of a deck. He's a core. He's a whole set. So he probably won't get hit. And especially since it's the next big pendulum-based deck to come out in uh, Shining Victory, the next thing. No, no, no. Uh, he'll probably stay at three, despite all the chaos he, he, he ensues. So, uh, like I said, I, I think Wavering Guys will go down to one. I think he'll stay at three. I think Damage Juggler will be banned. Now, Plush Fire, I'm still kind of scratching my chin on that one. Like I said, if, 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 if Damage Juggler is banned, then what are you doing with Plush Fire? But you could probably still do some, you know, rank 4, perform mage shenanigans with 3 Draco Slayers and 3 Plush Fires. You can go, you know, pop, summon your hat, your, your, your hat tricker or your uh, trick clown, and that, that that's a free summon, right? And, and a free search, so... I could probably see maybe Plush Fire getting hit if Luster stays at 3, but I'm not sure. Maybe down to 1? Maybe down to 2? I'm not sure. I don't know. You guys tell me what you guys think. Alright, moving on. Solomon Strike. Uh, this is a tough one. There's, there's, there's part of the community saying, like, no, no, it's not, it shouldn't be hit. Uh, we haven't seen it that much, and uh, it, it, it's making Konami money. And there's other Konami uh, is like, um, it's a broken ass Solemn card, and it should be hit. I'm the latter. I'm the latter. We have plenty of press set, pre set precedents of Solemn Strike, and I, I'm actually shocked that the OCG didn't even hit it. Uh, here in the TCG, like I said, we're, we're a lot more conservative. I mean, they even have Solemn Judgment, for goodness sakes. Like, we're like, no. No Solemn Judgment, one warning, and, I mean, like I said, compare the traps. Compare the traps. This wouldn't be the first time that we hit traps. OCG, they're not really known to hit traps. They have three torrentals. They have three bottomless. They, they, they go to town with traps. Here, we're like, Composes that one, bottomless that one, torrential that one, and destruction that one, like all these really great traps. One. You get one. Now compare those traps. Solemn Strike and tell me that Solemn Strike shouldn't be limited. Exactly. Uh and I said it I said it's it's also past the threshold. Uh, you know. Uh, even if they put strike down to one, you, you it's still a risk versus reward because then you'd be like, well, I only need one strike. Let me go ahead and buy a, 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 a box and see if I can pull that strike. So Konami is still making money. Uh, you, you're kind of comparing the, the, the price of strike on, to the secondary market, and even that price has been going down just because they've been selling more sets. Uh, it would just be healthier for the game to go ahead and put strike down to one. And we, and we while people are arguing, like, oh, we haven't seen much of it, they haven't warranted it yet. Not even. Like, it's literally just been PP as king. Why you set any back row? But, you know, you better <laughs> bet your biscuits then when, you know, monarchs come to town and they start locking you out of duels and stuff. And, you know, monarchs are very susceptible to back row. You know, you know, for damn straight, we're going to be seeing that Solemn Strike. So, uh, yeah. The Solemn Strike, like I said, I think Lush is probably going to stay at three. Uh, I'm not sure how the hype of Rodin is. It's kind of up and down. But, uh, you know, Rodin can still search that strike. So, not bad. All right, moving on. Solemn Warning. I think someone said it should be banned. It's fine at one. Uh, like I said, judgment, judgment can stay banned. Uh, you know, half your life points to stop anything. Come on, uh, strike, strike, uh, strike, and warning. I think are in the same boat. You pay two thousand life points to stop like a summon. You pay uh, fifteen hundred to stop inherit summon or effect. That's not too terrible. So, uh, strike should be on one. Warning should be at one. Judgment should be banned. Simple as that. All right, moving on. Lavalva Chain. Nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, they're not bringing back a lot of Lavalva Chain. Lavalva Chain is an enabler. It really is. And despite how I would love to have Lavalva Chain back, I mean, you've seen the shenanigans that it did. I mean, for goodness sakes. Foolish, that's at one. 
lower consistency. My position, that's a one. Lower consistency. Why would we give you a card that that does the exact same thing as those two, which have lowered consistency? They're hit. Like I said, sending cards from your deck to your graveyard is a no-no in Yu-Gi-Oh. Why the hell would they give you a Kalala Chain, which you would always have access to? Like, they banned it for a reason. It's going to stay banned. Probably forever. You know, Kalala Chain is that kind of card. It really is. And it sucks. It's been hurting my Yu-Bell deck, and I want to cry. But I understand. I understand. All right, moving on. Zemaidi. I doubt it. Like I said, it just doesn't seem like they want to move windups. They wanted to move windups. They would have done it a long time ago off of precedence of OCG. OCG moved windups a long time ago while we were just sitting here like, nope, 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 nope. So like I said, I said, there's just some things that seems like Konami hates on list. They hate Stratos, they hate windups, they hate Zephyr. So uh, I'd rather keep it a surprise factor than predict that. I mean, for goodness sakes, freaking uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Gear Gear got their crap back before uh, wind ups in the deck. Or so there you go, right there. Freaking Fire Fist, freaking uh, just a ton of decks that got hit after these decks wind up in the deckers and then got their crap back. You know, Spellbook of Fate. All these were all these decks were freaking uh, uh, wind up time. And nope, still they're all free while wind ups in Zekers are still locked up. All right, moving on. One for one. One for one's an interesting card, you know. It's not technically a one for one. Uh, this one will kind of come down to a business standpoint because we don't really have any precedence from OCG. Uh, even OCG has a one for one at one, but there are a couple of decks that have some level one monsters that you might want to see. But I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I probably that went to a surprise factor. If one for one goes up, then it'd be like, oh, okay, interesting. But if it doesn't move, then I wouldn't be surprised either. Uh, we've seen Sunet against these level one monsters. And, you know, like I said, just come to a business standpoint. What does Konami want to do? Do they want to move up one for one and promote more level one shenanigans and plays and get money off of that? Or do they just want to keep one for one at one because summoning from your deck? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Uh, I think we have two more cards in this episode, so let's go ahead and end it off with a bang. Let's talk about Norden and Instafission. All right. Uh, Norden Instafusion. Some people think that Norden should be banned like those, uh, the OCG. Some people in Instafusion. I think Instafusion down to one is fine. Uh, Norden hasn't had the explosive impact uh, that we were thinking that it does. Like Yu-Gi-Oh! is going to be truck and destroyed and everybody is going to die because Norden. But you can't lie that it hasn't done enough to warrant the attention. Uh, now, when Konami's sitting down, you know, they're, of course, going to discuss and think about pressing from OCG. They're not going to be like, all right, well, we should ban Norton. No. No, Norton hasn't been that bad. Uh, just lower than consistency. Just put Institution down to one. You have one Norton, one Institution. Uh, and if you get that one Institution, do that one Norton play, good for you. But the consistency is lower. You want to go ahead and use Revival to summon back that Norton and do more plays at that. More power to you. But then, you know, it's still, it's still lowered consistency. Uh, you don't have to go to the extreme of banning Norton. And there's really no point in hitting Norton down to one and then having three Institution. It'd be dumb because then it would literally just be the same thing. They would just probably just put different rank four monsters. I mean, you got to remember, Instafusion is an enabler for more shenanigans it paid a thousand life points to get an additional summon for an xc or synchro it's always been like that it's just norton it's even worse because it summons the monster back from the graveyard for additional plays just uh if you have a level four that's a free rank <laughs> a rank four right there without even using your normal summon you can compare that to wolf bark so uh yeah just lower the consistency just put the infusion down to one uh there's no reason to hit norton there's no reason to hit uh uh was it was that freaking refusion or whatever or whatever the no nah. It's fine. You want to do all that shenanigans with Norden, have more power to you, but your consistency is lowered. Alright, so, there we go, people. That is part one. Oh, my God. Yeah, about 28 minutes. Alright. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed a couple of duels of uh, uh, Morph Ages in the background. Sorry, I'm not commentating. Like I said, this is all off commentary. So, I uh, will be back Wednesday for part two while dealing with DDDs. Hopefully, well. <laughs> and, of course, Friday... And uh, hopefully wrapping it up. Like I said, there are a ton of cards. You guys put a ton of cards on. I got a ton to talk about. And my balance prediction will be up on the 1st on uh, Monday. Monday. So look forward to that. But you can probably already guess a couple of the cards just from what I've talked about so far. So, like I said, tell me what you guys think. I, I would love to get your guys' opinion on what I've said so far. If you guys agree with me, if you disagree with me, and go ahead and help me out. Like I said, I think Luster's probably going to... The big one is, I think Luster's going to say that 3. So what are we going to do... I think Luster's going to stay at 3, and Damage Jugger's going to be banned. So what are we going to do with Clutch Fire? Does Clutch Fire need to get hit? If that's actually what occurs. And well, we bring us at 1. You know. So, yeah. 
Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for all the support. Thank you guys for taking the time to do this. And I said, tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Tagging, use my blue eyes. This is That's not going to be part of it. And then back on Wednesday with part two. All right, people. Thanks for watching.